Welcome to one of the most secretive and stressful places in the world. Why? Because even if you've been here before, in the most stressful and scary moments of your life, you probably don't even remember it. One of the big things that patients ask me about is why do they wake up delirious or hysterical or really emotional after anesthesia? Have you ever heard of anyone waking up crying or maybe cussing or screaming or maybe even trying to hit their doctors when they wake up from surgery? I'll tell you, I've seen it many, many times. The number of times I've had to you know, move out of the way because the patient's trying to hit me or the surgeon or the nurses is a lot more than I'd like to admit. But why does this happen to patients is one of the things we're going to talk about because it just shows how powerful your mindset before surgery and your mental health before surgery is to how you tolerate anesthesia and how comfortably and safely you wake up. I'm outside in nature today out here at Bernal Heights in San Francisco, California, just as a reminder of how powerful nature can be in helping us tap into our inner healing potential. And believe it or not, it's actually nowhere more apparent than in the operating room during your surgery, just how powerful your inner healing potential can be. In large part because patients can't take a lot of their medications or other substances that they may use to self-medicate before their surgery because of the risk of dangerous complications with anesthesia. And that's where we can really tap into our inner healing potential to help our surgery go more comfortably, more safely, and to ultimately recover faster. And we all have this capacity. I want to talk about it today, and we'll go back to the operating room in just a little bit. But I'm out here with Karma, my doggie. You can probably see her back there. So let's talk a little bit about how surgery can actually improve your mental health through one of medicine's best kept secrets. Patients' bodies open up under anesthesia. And even though you might be unconscious, especially if you're under general anesthesia, your body is still telling us a lot about itself. And a lot of patients don't know this. Just take, for example, the easy ones like heart or lung disease. The way that anesthesia interacts with the body is very, very obvious. But what about things that involve your mental health, like severe anxiety, depression, or PTSD addiction? These are also apparent from how your body interacts with anesthesia before you go to sleep and after you wake up. A lot of patients may not recognize just how much their body is telling their doctors, even when they're unconscious on the operating room table. So the big question is, how is this possible? If you're not telling us, how can we know about your mental health state? Well, it has to do in part due to the powerful mind-body connection. That's right, it's not just like hokey pokey stuff. This is real things that your doctors see in your body when you're under general anesthesia or even under sedation. So one of the reasons is from the medications that patients take to treat their mental health conditions. Those are pretty easy to rationalize because if you're taking these medications, they can interact with anesthesia and they might increase your anesthesia requirements, might change how your heart or lungs interact with the anesthesia or how they interact to the surgery. But what about patients that don't take any medications? Can their bodies still tell us things about their mental health before and after surgery? Absolutely. Look no farther than patients that use substances to self-medicate. By the way, <laughs> look who came into the frame here. Karma, say hi. I'm out here with Karma. In one of my past videos, I've talked about just how powerful <laughs> doggies can be to recovering from surgery. And once again, without medications and without their side effects. Marijuana, alcohol, and other substances that patients use to self-medicate from these really debilitating mental health conditions. How do they interact with anesthesia? I've done some videos on this before as well, but the interaction can be significant, like double the dose is required for some anesthesia agents, like propofol. Not only do you need more anesthesia when your body has a lot of these lipophilic medications stored in its brain at the time of surgery, but you also have increased risk of side effects from the increased anesthesia, and you also have a greater chance of complications like heart or lung complications. One that I've seen a couple of times is actually called laryngospasm, when patients use marijuana chronically leading up to the operating room. So you might say, all right, what about patients that don't use other medications and don't use any substances? Are their bodies still 
telling us things about them? Are their bodies still telling us things about themselves when they're under anesthesia and they're not actually talking to us? The answer is absolutely yes. And once again, why and how is this possible is what a lot of patients ask me. How can your body be telling us things about your mental health when you're not using any medications, not using any substances? And it goes back to the power of the mind-body connection. The mind-body connection is medicine's best kept secret. And once again, it comes up in the operating room probably more than anywhere else in medicine because you can't take your own medications, typically your supplements, leading up to surgery. Things like those powerful medications like Xanax, the substances like marijuana that some patients use, you can't use these before surgery. Or if you do, there's greater risks associated with the anesthesia and surgery. So what about patients that are coming in with undertreated or untreated mental health conditions like depression or anxiety or that PTSD, maybe even if it's unrelated to past surgeries? Well, you can bet that they may have higher anesthesia requirements for some medications. Some of the anesthesia gases, some of the IV agents like propofol. And with more anesthesia requirements comes potentially the greater chance of being awake under anesthesia if you're being underdosed relative to how much your brain needs. Greater risk of heart and lung complications, of nausea, waking up with more pain. A greater chance of transitioning from the acute post-operative pain to chronic pain. Even a greater chance of infections. Like someone here wants some treats. Want some treats, Karma? What do you want? What do you want? Hi. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. There's also a greater risk of patients waking up more emotional afterwards with more delirium. Maybe waking up cussing or screaming or crying or swiping. A lot of it has to do with the mindset of the patients before they go to sleep. The more anxious, the more stressed, the more fearful the more likely they are to wake up with similar emotions that are then intensified by the disinhibiting effects of the anesthesia. And now, a lot of this might make you think, well, you know what, doc? Ignorance is a bliss. I don't want to know about all these complications. And that wouldn't be doing you the right thing. Because what a lot of patients don't know about is how much power they have over their health to control all these outcomes that we're talking about. Even when they can't use prescription medications or substances before their surgery. So let's go back into the operating room to talk about not only how you can have a safer surgery experience, but also actually use surgery to tap into your inner healing potential and to heal a lot of the mental health conditions that we're talking about, potentially naturally, and maybe for the rest of your life. So you may have never heard this before, and it's because it's one of medicine's most guarded secrets. And it's about how you can actually use the surgical experience to help stimulate your own inner healing potential and come out healthier, especially from a mental health condition after you leave the operating room, might sound kind of unbelievable, but here's why it's possible. Anytime you have these three elements, you have a potential for tapping in to your inner healing capacity. The first is a wake-up call. The second is trust in a guide. And third is a stimulus for epiphany. Now, around the time of surgery, what does this actually practically boil down into? The first is a wake-up call. It could be your surgery. Maybe you have cancer. Maybe it's been from a lifelong of smoking. Maybe it's from something that you never did yourself. But the fear and anxiety leading up to you coming into the operating room can be a huge wake-up call for many patients. Second is a guide. More on that in a second, but the anesthesiologist who's guiding you through the different stages of consciousness during your surgery with powerful medications can be a very powerful guide if the proper trust relationship is built in there. And third, the stimulus for epiphany. Now, outside of the operating room, this could be many different things, but in the operating room, we have powerful anesthetic agents that can actually sometimes give psychedelic-like experiences. Now, just to be clear, you don't need medications for that stimulus. Many patients can have a spiritual or religious awakening, and that might be the stimulus for them. In the operating room, though, we have so many medications that we're giving you that cross the blood-brain barrier and can have very unique effects on your perception of yourself and how you engage with the world around you. And these three put together, the wake-up call, 
the trust in your guide, like your anesthesiologist, giving you the medications, maintaining your life support, and the medications that themselves are helping you attain the unconscious state, together can help patients accomplish remarkable things that they may not have thought possible before they enter the operating room. Now it helps to have a trusting relationship with your guide, otherwise it might be difficult to let go of the cognitive rigidity that many patients have before surgery. That rigid mindset can certainly contribute to worse anxiety or more pain when they wake up. Just think of the statement, I won't feel any better until I beat the pain. There's a lot of rigidity built into that mindset and I hear it every day in my patients. But if you can trust your guide, such as your anesthesiologist, it might help begin to break down those barriers to your own self-healing. To be clear, there's no blame on anyone's rigid mindset, but these three put together, along with the powerful psychoactive anesthetic agents, can help make this otherwise terrifying experience one of incredible healing potential. This is why I call my patients the night before surgery so that I can begin a therapeutic relationship with them to take full advantage of the rare, and like I said, potentially profound experience they're gonna have in the operating room to hopefully wake up healthier than they were before they fell asleep. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to follow and share with your loved ones. And leave comments below and let me know what other secrets you wanna know about the human body so that you can control your inner healing potential.